Chapter 26 And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hakilah, which is before Jeshimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hakilah, which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies, and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose, and came to the place where Saul had pitched, and David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David, and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster, but Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed, but I pray thee, take thou the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner the son of Ner, and saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man, and who is like thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king thy lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice, and said, It is thy voice, my is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea. And when one doth hunt a partridge, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will do, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David, thou shalt do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. You see here again that the Ziphites have an in for David. And they go to Saul and say, he's still here. He's out there. And so Saul goes, another 3,000 men, and he goes down to try and find David. And David sends out his spies and finds out where they are camped. And then we have a really interesting story, which again shows the integrity of David. And shows that even the people around him who are the closest don't necessarily share that same integrity. David and one other man go 
to sneak into the camp of Israel. Now, very commonly, what you had was you had a trench, you had an area that was dug, and around that area, a small area that was dug in, and the king or the generals or whoever would sleep in that trench. And sometimes that would be covered over with shields or whatever if it was bad weather and to protect them from the bad weather. And sometimes not. It would just be open. But around them would be the king's bodyguard sleeping on the ground. And Abner, who was Saul's general, chief of all the armed staff, uh, he was there. And David and this other man were able to get in right up to the trench and uh, and Saul had his spear and a water bottle right by his head and the fellow that was with David said you know just let me use the spear and I'll get him and the first time and you we won't need to stab him a second time you'll be dead the first time I do this and David said no nope, he's the Lord's anointed I'm not gonna so they take the spear and take the water bottle and then they go a long ways away and David gets up someplace where he can be seen and he calls to Abner. And he basically centers out Abner and tells him, Boy, you didn't do a very good job. You're worthy of death. You were supposed to be looking after the king. And see, I was able to sneak in and I have the king's spear and the king's water bottle. And Abner, as the commanding general of the army of the children of Israel, would have known that basically he had let his king down. Now it said the deep sleep had come on because of the Lord. We well, that's a possibility. Okay. But there were instances in of the Indians in North America where they used to do what was called counting coup. And they would sneak into a rival tribes camp into the tent teepees and they would cut the cheek or the forehead of the individual that they wanted to count coup on. And the person, the thing was to try and do it so the person wouldn't even know it was actually happening. And would wake up in the morning and find that the person could have had their throat slit. And they would, or they would cut off hair, or they would cut off something. It's called counting coup. And so there are obviously people that are very good at that. And David and this other guy were very, very good at it. And Abner, uh, basically was worthy of death because he'd let down the king and then David basically makes the point he doesn't he doesn't do anything he isn't going to do anything it's up to the Lord to do whatever the Lord's going to do with Saul Saul finally recognizes that and from this point forward Saul no longer is actively hunting David to kill him finally David has enough problems as it is without having to worry about Saul, but at least now he doesn't have to worry about Saul anymore.